He was a um, foreign la an academist. He came from Germany, therefore the rigorosity of, the, of the, his works. Uh, Frederick was a bit more classicist. He admired the classicists, but um, he had as models Rodin and Bourdel um, from the French so, um, sculpture school. Uh, Cecilia formed in Munich and her first works are a bit uh, academic and uh, Jugendstil. And uh, afterwards, after she goes to Paris and lives there for a while, um, takes a bit of modern influence. She meets uh, young artists from, uh, from Paris, also meets Brancouche and his uh, circle of friends. So her art evolves in a way to, to modernity. All right. I do have another curiosity. Sure. Uh, <laughs> because uh, in sculpture and in art in general, one artist, a painter, a sculptor needs a muse, a source of inspiration. Yes. What were their sources of inspiration? What were they actually inspired by? Uh, from the landscapes of Bucharest and from the European uh, landscapes because they did travel a lot. So what was the muse for them? I think for Cecilia the muse was the, f the woman in general. As you can see in most of her works, uh, the uh, principal character is the woman. So she traveled a lot, saw a lot of women in different, uh, in Spain, in um, France. She was really attracted to the gypsy women because she loved their figures and um, the shape of the body and the color of the skin. Uh, Frederick, I think he was influenced by the classics, by the classics, by the classic uh, style, the um, Renaissance even. Even here we can see a bit of um, Renaissance memories in the house and in the works of the in the house. Uh, but a particular muse, I think, for Frederick was also Cecilia. Yes, it was a standard of beauty, which I think he tried to apply in some of his works. In a family of artists, I believe that we could uh, definitely talk about love stories. And uh, they were both inspired by each other, and they used to work side by side, and they used to teach others because they were both professors at the same school. What was their relationship and what is this, their story? How did they meet? They, meet, they met actually in, um, in Germany when Cecilia used to stay there. Uh, she was married at the time with someone else, with a violinist, uh, Romeo Kunzner was his name. Uh, she also had a child with him, Romeo Stork. After she came in Romania and settled for um, forever in 1906, uh, they started exhibiting together at uh, Tinerima Artistica and uh, they became really good friends and uh, she actually says that he was, he was the only person she could actually talk about art and uh, that she felt he feels the same way like her. So they, their relationship evolved until she decided to um, break up with um, Künstler in, uh, in Germany and married him in 1909. So actually a beautiful artistic friendship transformed in transformed time into a love story. Into a love story yes. And into a beautiful marriage. Beautiful marriage. In her words, she actually said that all the years they were together, they did everything together. They were just separated by a wall when they used to work. Um, but uh, everything was done together. They taught together. Uh, live together, work together, exhibit it together. So, the classical soulmates. Yes, classical soulmates. Even in her words, yes, that's did what they, she says. Did they have any, any children? Did they inherit their talent uh, for, uh, and their passion for arts and sculpture? Uh, yes, they had two daughters, Gabriela and Cecilia, known as Lita Stork. Uh, both, one was ceramist and one an architect, so they inherited the, their parent, uh, parents' talent. 
Coming back to the house, because we are uh, in the inside now and we can admire all the, the beautiful uh, works and the paintings by both Frederick and Cecilia. I would like to know how the house is divided. Because you mentioned earlier the fact that the front of the house uh, was uh, actually meant for the workshop and uh, the back of the house was for the day-to-day -day living and for receiving guests, etc. Tell me a bit about uh, how it is divided. Well, where we are standing right now was the workshop of painting of Cecilia in the first part of the house. Uh, there, if you will see, they um, call it the street salon and also a room dedicated to Balchik, where they used to have a house and um, go there during the summers. The other part of the house, the back of the house, is the workshop of Frederick. So they were just separated by a wall. And uh, in the back of the house, like you well said, was the day-to-day -day living, which also now is kept by the um, descendants of the family. You mentioned Balchik earlier. It is a city in Bulgaria, uh, our neighboring country, and it also has a very beautiful uh, landscape since uh, it's uh, washed by uh, the, the Black Sea. Yes. What was the reason for the stay uh, there? You mentioned the fact that they did have a residence, but were they inspired by, uh, by Balchik in their work? Did they dedicate some time and uh, paintings? to their stay in Balchik? Of course. At the time, the city of Balchik was almost a school of painting in that period. So most of the artists from the interwar period were going there during the summers. Most of them, some of them even stayed um, for years there. Uh, it was discovered by uh, Satmari, the painter, which we can also the store collection has some of his works and um, we can even read in her book that they were really attracted and that their soul was, uh, was there. Um, she suffered uh, a lot when they have had to leave there and unfortunately their house, you can see in a painting made by Cecilia, is uh, kept really bad today. Uh, it also has mural painting made by Cecilia, which I think now it's in a um, really bad shape. Uh, they had a lot of friends there. It was a colony of artists um, that painted and worked there. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it was um, kind of finding their um, inspiration there. And we can see in her paintings that well, there must be something special about Balchik and something uh, inspirational uh, since uh, Queen Maria of Romania was also very in love with Balchik. She used to have a castle there and uh, in some of her memoirs she does write about her time uh, with a chevalet <laughs> on the balcony on the terrace of the, the Balchik castle uh, trying to depict the landscapes there, because she was an artistic yes. uh, personality also. I think what attracted the painters most in Balchik was the light. If uh, we read their um, memoirs, most of the artists say that the light was something fascinating. And also the environment to have both hills and the sea was something they, they really found and uh, tried to um, to surprise it in their, in their works. Is there any particular object or um, artwork that they were very fond of, either one of them? Well, their one of works their creations, or their creations, which they really, really felt as uh, describing their whole personality. Well, I think for uh, Cecilia was the painting behind you, uh, the diptych that uh, shows the spiritual love and uh, earthly love, uh, which we can read from her memoirs that she devoted herself to, to realize it. And for Frederick, I think all of his works were, <laughs> all of his works were found to, to him, mm -hmm. yes.
The Stork Museum in Bucharest is like a hidden treasure in the heart of the city. It is an altar dedicated to the purity of art, an open book that speaks through bright colors, not words. And everything inside comes to life as soon as you step foot in the universe created by the Stork family. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you have enjoyed the superb artistic atmosphere of the Stork House and also the delightful stories about this talented family that contributed in such a crucial way to the evolution of fine arts in Romania. Until next time, remember to make your life a beautiful story.